Dave, this Post Malone guy, I mean, <laughs> he's really for these these youngins nowadays, I feel like. I see a lot of a lot of tweets from I think accounts that gear towards teenagers on Twitter that post uh post Malone videos of him singing like plain white tees or group love tongue tied and people are just like oh how could you not love post malone and i, I don't uh, <laughs> i listened to his his most recent album beer bongs and bentley's it's his second one um and I, I did not love this album at all uh but tell me why i should love this guy no i I'm, i don't like post malone either i've never been impressed with his music um but like you said he's quite popular and that's kind of why i find him interesting just because i try to understand why the fuck so many people care mm -hmm. and his debut uh, project, Stony, came out December 2016. We didn't even review it um, because it wasn't very good. And you know, I'm usually the one bringing bringing the hip hop projects to you, if anything. Yeah. And I didn't want to waste your time with it. It wasn't worth <laughs> listening to. Um, before that, obviously, brushed on a scene with White Iverson. Mm -hmm. and then he had like Go Flex as his next song, and w w you were there at the Meadows when we saw him, right? I think you like came in at the end of the set. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I the first don't year remember that he so, only yeah. had those two songs at that time. Mm -hmm. Then Stony comes out a few months later. Congratulations with Quavo gets really big. Uh, I fall apart gets really big, and these are songs that just they keep, they're racking up the streaming numbers, and they're just kind of lingering on the Hot 100 chart for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, to that point, Stony has been on the Billboard 200 chart for albums for 71 weeks, mm -hmm. basically as soon as it came out. I mean two weeks ago it was ninth like that's solely off streams he's just driving so many streams because he's so fucking popular and that's despite the fact that his music is pretty mediocre and he's mm -hmm. also been kind of controversial because if you remember two years ago i thought he'd be a lock for xxl uh, freshman because he's hey, so popular he had hits and he was like not about hip-hop at the time and didn't want to be on it and like he had those controversial comments about if you want to feel something don't listen to hip-hop i listen to bob dylan and people are like oh well you say that and then your biggest hits about fucking bitches and popping pillies. So mm -hmm. like, what know, do you really stand for? Exactly. So like culture vulture uh, charges, there's some merit to that, I guess. But I mean, now we have beer bongs and Bentley's his first album since being this total force mm -hmm. in streaming. And yeah, I mean, first of all, he does not have the lyrical content to justify the 64 minute runtime. <laughs> nor the versatility or variety. I mean, wh wh what did you think of the long listen? So I opened this up on Friday and I saw how long it was. And I was like, I don't have this much time to give to Post Malone at this point, especially when the Janelle Monet record we're going to talk about. I'd rather give my time listening to that twice through right. than listen to a Post Malone album. Um, I'd listened to it today and it really just I was at work, but I, I, had a, I had a lot of time to kind of get some work, some paperwork done. And it really just all blended together, except for a couple of songs that seemed like he was taking some risks, kind of stood out. But overall, just very like uh, underwhelming, I, I guess. I don't really know if I if I can say that when my expectations for it were pretty low to begin with. Right. I see him as someone that because I even thinking back to that Meadows uh, set, I asked everybody, oh, how'd you like him? And they were like, oh, pretty good. You know, he played those songs I know. And then he did some covers. And I was like, right. Post Malone Fleet, Fleetwood Mac, I believe. Yeah. And that, I was like, Fleetwood Mac does, or uh, Post Malone does Fleetwood Mac, which I found strange. But I think he just pulls off of that, like, nostalgia of, like, early 2000s, I don't know, like, emo indie rock, mm -hmm. basically, and throws that out there for... Uh, his fans to kind of like uh, swoon over and make big. But to talk about the streaming numbers, I was looking at how this album's doing. It's it's already eligible to go platinum. Like, right. That's think, just off the singles because Rockstar was a number one hit. That huge. Unbelievable. Crazy. Dude yeah. does numbers. Um, is there anything redeemable about this album? Anything worth listening to? I mean, I think it's produced very well. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is Post Malone doesn't have a great voice. Uh, I don't think <laughs> he, he would say that. Yeah. But it's made in such a way that they make his voice sound as good as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. It's mixed well. I think there's some decent beats on here. But like I said, it's very lyrically deficient, which again, <laughs> funny from a guy who called out the content of rap in the past. But right. it's a lot of, you know, trap anthems about, you know, what you expect. And like, I wasn't in, like people were talking up Zach and Codeine, you know, Disney Channel reference and didn't didn't stand out to me at all. Uh, Rockstar, I think, 
has the best line on the album, but it's not from Post Malone. It's 21 Savage when he <laughs> says, why you got a 12 car garage, but only got six cars. Yeah, like, that's fucking <laughs> that's hard as hell. That was great. Um, 21's great on that song. Yeah, um, he's just so mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like some bitches, I didn't mind you easier YG on that track, but it's still pretty, you know, generic. Mm-hmm. I thought 92 Explorer sounded at least more unique than most of it. That's towards the end. Um, and Candy Paint is a really popular song already. That was on the Fate of the Furious soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So that song's a year old. Um, yeah. I actually thought Stay stood out just because it was so different from the rest of the album. It's basically like this acoustic song um, where he's exploring this uh, unhealthy relationship with a partner or an ex-girlfriend on it, mm-hmm. which I actually think might be a lane that he could maybe be successful in is moving more towards what the, these type of covers that he does. Cause it's obvious that a lot of his fans like that, but you know, in, in a way we talked about this with, uh, with X uh, tentacion and it just seems like he doesn't really have uh, a feeling for who he is as an artist completely yet. And mm-hmm. I mean, when you become popular off something that you pretty much openly bash, I think that makes sense that he's, stuck between doing something that maybe he doesn't feel totally hundred percent like is real is real art and then not being good enough and good enough at what he actually wants to do. Right. But it just kind of leaves him feeling like a pretty hollow artist in general. Yeah. And I mean, and also like he kind of came out through hip hop, but he's not really much of a rapper. No, he's he's just a mediocre singer, if anything. Mm -hmm. But that's despite the fact that he's cool with most of the people in hip hop. Again, songs with Quavo, YG, G easy Sway Lee's on here. Yeah. So like, He's hip hop adjacent at at at, at worst, but okay, he's not really making rap. But he's really popular with Gen Zs, and can't really say why. I guess they just relate to his shallow lyrics. I I can't explain it. But him and Yachty, he's not, man, he's not gonna go away. I see them very similarly. Him and Yachty. I don't I don't know if that's maybe fair to say, but just where they kind of are at with what two sure. albums each under their belt. 